Wildfire after the show. I'm Sean Piller, executive producer of Wildfire, and uh, we are here today on the set of uh, the Ritter House, and you just watched Opportunity Knox, written by Stephanie Rips and directed by Bradford May, and I'm here today with the lovely and talented Genevieve Cortese and director Bradford May. Welcome. Hi, Sean. Hey. How you guys doing? We're <laughs> doing good. We're doing very good. It was so a great show tonight. I loved it. It was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. What fun to favorite? make and fun to watch. Yeah. So, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me a little bit <coughs> about yourself, and we'll talk to Brad about the episode a little bit. About We're myself, Jen, or myself, Chris? Both. <laughs> um, uh, what do you want to know? Where are you from? I'm from all over. I grew up in uh, San Francisco, and then um, I moved to Montana for a year, and um, after Montana, my family took a big road trip and looked at different ski towns and ended up in Sun Valley, Idaho. So, oh. I guess Sun Valley is my home, and cool. New York, and now here. And tell me about Chris. And Chris is from Oakland, which is actually um, half an hour away from where I grew up in San, like San Francisco area. Mm -hmm. And um, a girl who I think is a little bit older because of her experiences and um, a little bit of a, a rebellious streak. And um, ends up in, in Juvie because of that. And uh, a very determined and passionate and fierce and fiery and lovely person. Just like you, just like Genevieve. <laughs> so, the Brad, that stole the horse. Right? The chick that stole the horse. Yeah. So let's talk about this episode a little bit. Well, Opportunity Knocks, uh, we're number two. I think we're just uh, second season hitting our stride. We, uh, we're going through winter months now. Uh, we were just, the leaves on the trees were just about changing. One thing that's lovely, I think, about the show, Sean, now oh, yeah. is that we had uh, a summertime and we're actually kind of going through the year as, uh, as it falls. And, um, kids are able to wear different clothes and it's uh, that makes it quite exciting I think some of the things that were interesting with this show were certainly the commercial which mm -hmm. was the show within the show um, using a lot of our own crew members and a lot of the stuff that uh, was pretty easy I didn't have to move anything out of the way we just kind of right. stuffed everything in there and we used it all didn't we and you stuck uh, the producer Gary Goodman in, in the I, first yeah, I think shot he of didn't the... make the cut though did he no he did he stayed oh I would not God. cut him out you must have a thing not. going with him then because that piece I could do. have gone Sean. Dude, he's a very <laughs> handsome man I had to leave <laughs> So Gary's you, terrific. You worked with an act, there was sort of a play within a play, and we could talk yes, about that a little bit. Certainly. But how was it working directing another director in that commercial? Uh, all he had to do was watch me for about <laughs> a half an hour, and then he just he he got, he totally took it up, didn't he? Coughing, yeah. Ding, ding, baby, ding, yeah, ding. Ding, ding. It's in the movie. It's in the movie. All the baby yeah. stuff and the things that I, that I bring Crap. to the table. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I, I kind of rule and direct with love and kindness. And, yes, you do. Uh, it makes it exciting to be there, and we joke up up a crazy amount uh, and then all of a sudden we just turn it off and we focus and I think uh, that's what I bring to the table as a director is that uh, keeping everybody light and when you work 12 hours a day 13 hours a day you have to keep it that way so uh, no we had a great guy that we cast as the director he was a lot of fun and then as I say most of our people were in it and then, of course Jen had to uh, kiss this guy that was cut more she than it well. uh, looked like a drawing well, I think it was a cartoon he, he was, was so cut <laughs> But uh, then, uh, obviously, he, uh, you got back with Junior then. It was uh, the kiss that uh, started it all over again. The kiss that people have been waiting to see what happens with for a long time. Well, they saw it tonight. Oh. They yes, saw they that did. tonight. Now, where is it going? We don't know. We, we do not know. That Actually, we don't know. You've got to watch, right? Out. No, well, that's we know. We know exactly where it's going. In no, you, you know where it's going, Sean. I do. So let's talk about sort of the play within a play. We had a director directing a director, mm -hmm. and sort of <coughs> Chris and Genevieve were sort of, you know, She's auditioning her first audition, and you were walking. Talk about how that sort of paralleled your life in terms of getting this part and how it sort of changed Genevieve's life and also changes Chris's life. Um, well, I don't, I don't know if it necessarily changes that much for Chris, per se. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like, for me, I, I just sort of related to it because here's a girl who's sort of coming into her own and mm -hmm. getting some recognition, and for me, I, I think that's more how I relate to it. It's, okay, well, now I'm in season two, and we're getting more press and more recognition, mm -hmm. and and it's it's odd and awkward, and, you well, know. She's finally on a horse. She's finally getting to be a jockey. That's, right. Uh, that's, yeah. That's her whole feeling is that she wanted to be a jockey. And then feeling, and do I there. deserve to be here? Yes, and, and, that and the turmoil of that, you know, the turbulence of now that I've gotten what I want, mm -hmm. is that really where I want to go? And I think right. that's what this season is. Well, and all the stuff that comes with it, too. Out. I mean, the commercial stuff is something that was completely unplanned. and Very foreign for you. Very, very foreign yeah, for, that's for right. Chris. And, sure. And it's totally weird and bizarre and to act and stuff. And, and it's it's stuff that doesn't come, you mm -hmm. know, she mm -hmm. wasn't expecting to come with being But I think that's what worked because there was a, 
there was a fragileness to it where yeah. she was very unsure of what yeah. she was doing out there. And we tried to make it that way, and I think Jen pulled it off very well. I put her up on the horse with the hot sauce. And it was, it was, it was, it was take very your fun. hand this way, do like that, do shirt. that, do that, and the shirt, and the whole thing. The guy, <laughs> yeah, he was really cut, wasn't he? He really was. You he didn't was. like him at all. How come you didn't really care for him that much, did you? <laughs> he was horrible. Yeah, he wasn't very good. No, he? he was great. He was great. He was a little blah. Those guys that are built like that are a little blah. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about soccer a lot. Is that what well, he was into soccer? Good. Yeah. Well, that's nice. All right, we're going to fan emails. We have a couple no. emails here and Where questions we get for you. Ooh, for I don't you. get any emails. He just gets emails from me and right. And <laughs> you got to do this better. You got to go back there better. Get done. Come on. Actually, no. They're mostly awesome job. I can't believe you made your day. That's very true. Um, so from Alyssa H in Bloomberg, Pennsylvania. She Bloomberg, asks, Pennsylvania. How are you the same and different than Chris? Oh, well, this is interesting because I think when I first read the script, I was very similar to Chris. And here we are, two people who are very headstrong and determined and tomboyish. And, um, but I think at the same time, Chris is much more reserved and much more, mm. f not fragile, but just more afraid to express. And, and when she does, there's a point to it. You know, I feel like if you notice in a lot of the scenes, um, I don't have as much dialogue. It's mainly like taking stuff in, and when stuff's said, there's mm -hmm. a purpose to it. And I think <laughs> Jen's more, I'm more giggly, and I'm more like explosive mm -hmm. on set. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I am like con I mean, I, I feel you like have I fun. laugh a lot. You have fun. You, you really do. You have a, you have a, a wonderful sense of, uh, of the knowledge of, uh, of how to make a movie, which is, was very impressive to me. Um, that you hadn't done it for so long. There's a lot of people that don't have your savoir faire on the set that, that, that I've worked with that have been around for much, much longer than you have. So Fresh out of college. Well, yeah, but uh, you know what you're doing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very surprised, Sean, that all the, the people that you cast in Wildfire, uh, most of them have not worked before, and that um, you and your father and Lloyd went with people along with the network who hadn't uh, been tested. And I think that's uh, what's been most exciting for me to be here and be part of it is um, nurturing these young actors along and um, and they have the faith in me and, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully they'll be better off for this experience and that's what's been most exciting I think for me. And it really just <laughs> runs through the whole day. I mean, it's a kind of a cliche to say that it becomes a family, but it really yeah, does. It well, we really are definitely is. a family. And, but and I think, and you, go ahead. No, but I, I mean, I noticed even when I did Dead Zone, mm -hmm. You guys don't cast jerks. I mean, none of the people. <laughs> it's true, though. I mean, if you look at the people on the dead zone, I mean, Chris Bruno, Anthony Michael Hall, um, John Adams, all of those people were incredibly kind and gifted, took their time, wanted to rehearse, calling. I mean, I'm still in touch with them. I'm getting me <laughs> letters from Anthony Michael Hall because I haven't called them back. And, and I'm like, I didn't know I could, you know? I mean, and then on our set, we have people who don't have attitudes. No one's no. bitching about anything. Yeah, it's it's true. like, no, we're actually happy to get here in the morning, and I think yeah. we're all very genuinely Despite excited. Despite the fact to that it's negative zero, <laughs> yeah, and you, I well, think it really no. shows. I think the chemistry really shows, and uh, I'm, so. I'm so amazed that even sometimes, you know, there's a line that you, we can't get right, no. and I'm just, you know, constantly nagging the writers. No, it's not. The scene's not right. And then I watch, you know, we run out of time, it's done tweaking, it's on the floor, you guys are shooting it, and then I get the dailies back, or I see the cut, and I'm just like, well, they made it work. Yeah. It actually is so good. But I think so we're good. also not. I mean, if something's not working, we do rehearse after I mean I'll go to Micah's house and we run it and figure mm -hmm. it out and I mean it's really cool that everyone wants to be better mm -hmm. they're not settling for anything mm -hmm. so no, and uh, for a cable show um, that do we don't spend a lot of money on it I think it has uh, a n not only a network feel but I would put it up against Definitely. any show on television it's it's gorgeous to look at our cinematographer and my very good friend Frank, Frank Pearl, Pearl just he's is awesome. uh, yeah. uh, he's just fantastic direct? and he directed an episode this season and uh, it, I saw it the other night he t brought it to me he was very proud of it and uh, besides it being just a little long it was fabulous <laughs> and it was fun to look at <laughs> now you're trying to get over it it's why you got to get some of that stuff out of there but uh, I think your guy James uh, Blunt was uh, did the, was on there and uh, well, we can't talk about that yet because no, we haven't we that do episode doesn't oh. air. So that's right. That's but cool. that's okay. That's coming up. There's that's a out. there's a very cool. Actually, we could talk about what. The, well, what the heck? Next, uh, what is it? Episode five. five uh, there yes. is episode five. an artist be, yeah. who's blowing up in Europe, and uh, he we used one of his songs in the first season of the show. Actually, two, two of his songs, songs, and he sort of did us the courtesy of showing up 
and uh, being in the movie, and as you would say, it's yes. in the movie. It's in the movie. And he then proceeded to leave us, leave our set, and go do Saturday Night Live. And mm -hmm. the um, Tonight Show or some uh, no, he morning? It was the morning show or Good Morning America and uh, and then Today Show maybe. I don't know. It was something in the morning. Something. It was up. It was before <laughs> I was awake. I right. Some great. Thing. Right, but uh, yeah, you should check out that music. It should, I that's coming website, up. Though. That'll yeah. keep watching because that's, that's coming up. On <laughs> that's All right, episode five. Another fan email number two. Wow. Courtney G from uh, Castonia. Is that how you say it? Castonia, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. What uh, do you do other than acting? I uh, no, I, I I wanted to be a pro soccer player <laughs> growing really? up. Really? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, for the longest time, that was all. It was all about soccer, and um, I haven't played in a while. But I played in college. Mm. And, and um, I love soccer, but I'm also, I'm, I'm a huge, I was also, I was a theater major and an English major, so I'm, I usually read like three books at a time, and I'm teaching myself <laughs> Italian on set, because I get, my mind like Slightly ADD. Very Like ADD. me and Brad, if you, yeah, that's why we all get along. I'm very <laughs> uh, yeah, Say one word, and I'm off. That's, that's, that's actually how we deal with it most of the time, it's very, it's just very loose. Uh, right. But uh, what you were, uh, it's true. you were saying earlier, Sean, that, uh, the, the family aspect of it and, and how we make things work on the set. It's a w wonderful environment to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of shows don't do that and you have to be true to the word. And uh, we, we want to make it right for the actors. The narrative of, of, of the cast is, is most important to us, I think, uh, throughout our shows. That it's real, that it makes sense mm -hmm. um, and that they understand what they're doing mm -hmm. because if they don't understand it, then we're not going to understand it. And uh, I don't I don't know if many people understand how tough it is to make uh, a television show because we don't work in continuity. Mm -hmm. People think you you open the show and you work straight on shoot through. We shoot, don't, right? we shoot usually two or three days at the ranch mm -hmm. and then we come here in this lovely environment, the beautiful set uh, that Vince built for us here. Um, and it's it's tough to stay within it in a seven day process. Most uh, one hour dramatic well, shows are eight days. That's true. Um, when I got I've recently pneumonia. done a couple of them in six days and, and Jen was sick. Uh, we, I got pneumonia. And well, it's five yeah. degrees Four in the morning. Days. That's true. Um, it's really, really cold. And we should say we're shooting in um, New Mexico. We are in, in the what, beautiful New Mexico. What's the exact town? Rio Rancho? We are, well, Rio actually, Rancho, Berna, Bernalillo. Bernalillo. Yeah. Bernalillo. Yeah. Yeah. And Albuquerque. Right. And the ranch is out there, and we've actually. Uh, built a facade over another home there because you guys like the ranch That's so right. much and it's I think we've really shot the uh, shot it as much as it can yeah, be shot it's uh, true. we're trying to get some some different stuff in there and, and but I think the whole thing of, about wildfire is it, it continues to change and I think it's intriguing for our audience and I know when I talk to people and tell them I'm doing wildfire now um, they're most interested because it is a continuation and they want to stay with these characters yeah um, and they genuinely are interested in what yeah. these kids are doing from day to day and it's, a, it's exciting it really is it is true yeah all right go on to question number three good answer by the way <laughs> all right and so, I sir and you sir <laughs> okay we and, and surfing horse all right so Coming up to uh, this question, Patrick M. from Beckley, West Virginia, what are some of your best and worst horse experiences? Ooh. Oh, and you can both answer this actually, question. Actually, <laughs> well, I have a good one. When I, I, used, I grew up riding, in, um, which is also why I'm similar to Chris, because actually in the pilot, mm -hmm. she steals a horse and rides up Mount Diablo. I grew up on Mount Diablo. <laughs> Did you steal a horse and ride up? Well, yeah. I'd ride, yeah, I'd ride up bareback. But at one time, I was in seventh grade, and I had my best friend, Joe Sweck, on the back of my horse. And we were riding. And Joe, at the time, he hadn't grown into his manhood yet. So he's in seventh grade. And he's talking Brad and I haven't really grown into our manhood. Well, I either. know that. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when it's going to happen. Mini May is more of a manhood. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, um, we're riding through, through um, this like field area. And, and he's on the back of my horse. And the next thing I know, I turn around. And he's flipping <laughs> upside down. <laughs> and I turn around. And he's like laid out on the floor. So. Did you go back to get him? Yeah, I did. Okay. And I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jen, Jen's an excellent rider, and uh, we're starting to get more into all of that. So that's uh, she does pretty well around the horses. But is it true that ride. that I, I don't know which horse it is, but I've heard this story and I've seen it in sort of the dailies. When you're some of these horses get kind of want to be in the shot, so they start to lean over. Well, we like try to, to get that's into our, the that's our classic, lights. classic two shot is Jen and Wildfire. That's Stealing I think that's light. that's the classic two shot uh, of the show. Right. When you can get tight on the two of them, and and, and she almost uses uh, the horse as her psychiatrist in a way. Um, <laughs> True. Or know, bartender. She sits in our there. Case. Well, in our case, uh, <laughs> or, well, or other things. Yes. But uh, when she's in there. Um, in the barn, um, that's her innermost thoughts. It's like a, a young girl writing in her diary almost. Right. Uh, well, it's like Felicity way she can talk. Record, exactly. Yeah. yeah, she can sit there and, and, and talk to Wildfire, and when Wildfire reacts to her, and she's uh, the, the horse knows Jen very well. So thank you guys. 
This was awesome. I Thank had fun. You. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned next week for A Good Convict is Hard to Find, which is episode three. Hope you enjoy. See you guys.